how to get panoramic images with your drone looking good without using a feature because they don't shoot in raw. Kind of plain, boring day here in Kodiak, but I've decided that this year I want to challenge myself to find photos in less beautiful times. And someone comes here to Kodiak on a day like today, they would find it amazing. But when you live it every day, you kind of take for granted what you got. And that's what I'm going to try to challenge myself this year and find photos when in my head there's not much going on. So that's the real challenge. But I'm just gonna go fly the drone. It's like a cheat code, honestly, for photos this time of year. A lot of snow that's deep and I don't feel like hiking or anything because I'm just gonna fall through the snow. So I'm gonna get some drone footage. I got my friend Shane with me. You guys all know I love Shane. And uh, hey Shane. Shane looks thrilled to be out. He's going through what I go through and just, it's hard to find, the, the roads suck. It's hard to find good compositions, you can't hike anywhere. Um, but he's going through the thing, so I convinced him to come out with me today and uh, we'll see if we get some photos. If I just get one photo, I'm happy with it. So, one photo that I like anyway, I'll be happy with that. So, first, I'm just gonna start out with a little cheat code and fly my drone here on American River and uh, see if we find anything worth it. I only got one battery, so let's see what we can make with one battery. All right, I'm going to show you how to take beautiful panoramic photos with your drone. Forgive the uh, filter or, or the, the UV rays on the camera here, but you get an idea. So all you're going to do is go to photo mode, shoot raw, and I'm going to start here. And I'm going to take three vertical panos or three vertical shots. One, I'm going to come down a little bit. Two, I'm going to come down a little bit further. Three. And then I'm going to move to the right just a little bit. You want to overlap your old shots. I'm going to take one, go back up a bit, a little bit, two, go back up a little bit, three, and then move to the right a little more, one, two, and three. And I'm going to bring you to Lightroom. And I'm going to show you how I edit these photos. It's very quick and easy. All right, I'm going to finish flying my drone here, but um, get some videos for you. And I just want to show you a pretty quick and easy video on how to get panoramic images with your drone looking good without using a feature because they don't shoot in RAW. So let me get some more footage here. Welcome to my Lightroom guys. 
Earlier of this video, I did see a bear down at the buskin, took a few photos. It kind of was in the river when I saw that. Walked up the river, which I got this photo, and then walked in the woods. So that's how the day started. I couldn't really vlog because it happened so quick. Anyway, this video is about how to make a drone panorama photo, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So what we're going to do is come over to where the panorama starts, and it's right here. And I'm going to just drag all the way to the ninth image. I'm going to hit shift, click, should say nine images selected because that's how many I took. And we can right click, photo merge, panorama, or if you notice it says you could also hit control or command M if you're on a Mac. So once you click that, it's going to make a preview. This is what the preview looks like. I like it. I'm going to hit merge and you can also select an auto settings and auto crop. I highly recommend you do that. You'll notice it says creating panorama up here. Once the photo's done, it's going to pop up right here and there's your panorama. I feel like my drone has a slight horizon shift to it. So I'm just going to adjust that just a hair and I'm going to make sure I hit constraint to image. So there's no white borders around the side like right here. I'm going to click enter and that's how you create your panorama. I'm just going to do a quick edit to show you a basic, basic tutorial. It's already almost edited. And I think for drone photos, Lightroom actually does a really good job of making them look decent. So let me show you what I would do. I'm going to bring the whites up just a hair, but I'm going to bring the highlights all the way down and maybe even the exposure down just a little bit. I don't want to blow out the whites on top of the mountains here. So that looks pretty good. I might warm it up just the slightest, slightest bit, but I kind of like the way it looks right now. Now, I don't really touch these unless I'm using a gradient, and I'll use a gradient in a little bit, but first what I'm going to do is just add maybe just a slight matte to the photo, bring the blacks down right here, and then bring the whites kind of back, but you want to make sure you don't overblow them out. And I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is maybe just add a slight, slight glow with the midtones. And I think, I think I like the blue. I really like that, but that's a little too much. So I'm, it's only going to be very, very minimal like that. And you can adjust the shadows to make them warmer if you want. But I don't, I'm not going to mess with that. I don't like it for this photo. And I almost want to make the branches a little blacker. So I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to slide the blacks down just a little bit. And now it makes the image a little too blue. So let's warm it up just the slightest, slightest bit. I like that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is bring some darkness into the sky and into the mountains. So I'm going to create a new linear gradient and I'm just going to make it look about like that. We're going to bring the exposure down just a little bit. Already bring some blacks in. I'm going to lower the blacks. I'm going to increase clarity and increase dehaze. Now, when you increase dehaze, it looks cool if you haven't added a photo before, but it adds like in the shadows, it adds a too much of the color temperature. So what I'm going to do is actually decrease the saturation until it looks almost neutral. And I like that a lot. I really do. You can adjust the temperature again, bring back some blues, maybe warm it up. But, you know, it almost looks really good warmed up. I think I'm going to keep it like that. I do like this image a lot, just the way it is. And I'm not going to touch anything else. Here's what the raw photo would look like. Here's the edited photo. And I'm pretty happy with it. I might just make another gradient for the foreground here. And let's do that now, just because the foreground does look a little dark. I'm going to increase the exposure and maybe even increase the clarity to bring some detail into the trees to make it give it a three dimensional look. And that's about what I would edit this photo as. I think it looks really good and uh, you can't beat Kodiak, Alaska any time of the year. It is absolutely beautiful here. That's going to be my image. There could might be more that I do to it later on, but this is a very basic tutorial for beginners, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you like the video, click like. Also, subscribe if you want to see more of my photography journey, my Alaska life, 
and everything in between. I do upload mainly photography stuff, but I do enjoy the occasional vlog. And uh, yeah, I have a great life here in Kodiak, and I hope to share and inspire my personal experience and inspire you to create something of your own. All right, anyway, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.